time for this my oceanic pro league week two day two set number two for the day we have got nvidius up against setnaps gaming my name is of course scott rankonius rankin and joining me is the lovely josh nightfall campbell you've been called lovely a lot tonight i know it, i feel so warm and fuzzy and just like my whole day gets uplifted Rank, we have not casted. If we have not done the rank four, the night only us in a in a long time. It's been a while. That's How are you doing? But, uh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. okay. A little little That's bit. That's good. Uh, a little bit short on sleep because so, the UTR <laughs> tournament this morning. But here it is, Pro League. It's in front of us. Let's talk about that and not what's happened prior. Nvidia versus Synapse. This is going to be in my mind. A potentially close game. You guys both suggesting it to go either 2 0 to Synapse or 2 0 to Nvidia based upon the first game. Do you want to? Do you want to come up with a new prediction in this game? Do you want to go with the split or do you want to go one way? I, I still want to stand by what I said in analysis and say 1 1. I believe in Synapse just because I, I feel like based on what we've previously seen is equal. Uh, uh, e Equal amounts of skill. Words are hard. So take a look at the stats for each team. We've got Nvidia up on on our screens, not not on your screens. We're in the pick and bands. Speaking of pick and bands, first band away from Synapse is Athena, followed by a Ratatoska from um, Nvidia, and then a Sylvanas again from Synapse, and then a Loki. Loki. Seeing two bands today, very interesting. I think this is coming straight out of Silicon just because Top Notch's style, he, he favors the Brawly sort of gods. He doesn't really favor Guardians, with the exception of the previously Guardian, now Warrior, um, Odin. Um, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't, he likes to stick to, to sort of your more Brawl style, meaning on tier, and obviously Odin now as well, now that he's shifted over towards. Towards more of that warrior sort of style, so banning away the assassins from their part is basically saying, hey, if we're going to pick an assassin on our side, it's going to go to the jungle, we know it's going to go to the jungle, and you know it's going to be going to the jungle. So removing that from the table says basically, alright, we are now a lot more open to flex picks and a lot less open to you flex picking, but crucially, this first pick left open for Synapse is our qualm. Yeah, and Alkong is just so strong. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see it coming through for Sense's last game up against the best in OCE being Avant. And Avant playing very, very well against it, but we'll have to see how well Fonke can do it this game as it was locked in for the first ban. But in response is Gib and Apollo for Invidious. Gib, did you know, fun fact, can actually cleanse an Alkong ultimate? I well, knew you could do it with bees, but I didn't know you could do it with a Geb shield, but there you go. It also, yeah, it's... I guess giving him the bonus health would put him above the 30% th threshold, whoever he does target with that shield. Oh, no, 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 well. it's, it's a CC cleanse. It's, it's, just, I, it's, it's purely it's... just the cleanse? Yeah, it's the cleanse. It's. I think we saw it last week. I'm not sure. I can't guarantee. I'm not sure where I saw it, but I know for a fact that you can cleanse it. And when it happens, yeah. it is the awesomest thing. Uh, yeah, see, I've, I've played around with the beads. I know that you can do it with beads. I've done it so many times myself, yeah. so I knew that, awesome. that that was a thing. I didn't quite know the Gibshu was a thing. Be interesting to see whether they can pull it off. Um, moving a little bit further into that pick, Ben, we are are going to see the Alpwash, and uh, I believe that was Ymir picked up coming through from the side of Synapse, and then in response, it is going to be the Thor. This is a this is a mainstay of Freemasons God Paul, and something that actually we forgot to throw in towards our drafting notes. This is the composition, and I feel like, I really feel like this is going to be lending itself to the exact same composition we saw in Nvidia's back as what they were, Silicon, in the qualifier tournament, running... Uh, Odin in the solo lane, and then Scylla towards the mid lane. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's just a carbon copy of what they were doing in, in the qualifier. Yeah, and it worked so well. Yesterday we saw Chiefs run Thor, Gib, and the setup was just huge. And when you mix that in with Scylla, especially on just rogues, uh, Scylla is just rogues, like, god pick. Like, godly pick. It's... It's one of his favorites, and he shows up so well. It's just, it's so strong. And the amount of setup coming through, like you mentioned, the Odin in the solo lane, the Thor, he's got the Anvil of Dawn, the Gib, Blink, Cataclysm, followed up with the damage from Ran Barana's Apollo actually locked in there, and the Scylla as well. So, 
massive damage for the side of Invidious here. Yeah, it's a double threat comp as well. Top notch plays a fantastic Odin. We know that. We've seen that already. Let's let's talk about the lineup that is going to be coming through from the side of Synapse with the Hercules in the solo lane. It is where well, they were obviously preparing for the Odin pick, right? They're like Hercules mm -hmm. can deal with it, but on the flip side, Hercules is going to get counted out by the Odin ring. Uh, Black of that healing. The real killer for me here from the side of Invidious on towards Synapse is the fact that they've picked up our posh and he is so vulnerable to bird bomb cage combo yep and uh, yeah it's it's just what you said right there is our posh has got no mobility and when you play it against odin odin is just full lock on there's nothing much else to say our posh is just so vulnerable like you mentioned and his ultimate while super strong if he's dead his ultimate stops The, the thing about our Porsche, though, into, especially into a Scylla matchup, is that she's going to be totally fine. There is no healing coming through that our Porsche can actually proc his uh, fleeting breath, I think it is, uh, off. So he's not going to get any stunts out of that one. You know, if it was no. into the Hercules, if it was going to pick in that, in that direction, you know, it's a bit more stunts. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a little bit funky, and then Geb, like, this composition the Silicon have built up is based around their three big divers, and then Rana and Rogue stay safe. They stay safe, they DPS who they can, they burst where they can, and Silicon do that, but it's the dire bodies of Freemason and Top Notch. These guys have played together since they both joined Smite, our best friends, they play with each other in real life, they play from each other's houses every now and again, I know that for a fact, and Nick Crick has been just playing with those two insane amounts of time so it's a triple threat dive comp and all of them can set it up and then <laughs> all of them can continue to do the fight by diving in as well and all of them have a decent amount of damage yeah, you know not not quite on the same scale as an odin thor but he can still do it with a nice shockwave and a nice pump combo mm -hmm. and the last before synapse was ho yi interesting i've been playing a lot of ho yi lately and i know you play a lot of mm. ho yi as well he's so strong his his mark of the golden crow increasing his penetration against uh the marked enemy and the stun from the ricochet it's it's just so much it's so much damage from basic attacks and then on top of that the sunbreaker he's also a, the strongest i want to say the strongest sir um between all the hunters mainly because of his passive that sun touched if he does get crit he can't be crit again in three seconds and while you're boxing it's very very strong but early game um it's not that strong because the opponent doesn't have crit which is interesting but we'll have to see how that one plays guys we are gonna jump straight into our set number two game number one between synapse and invidious stick around we'll be two minutes away <music>
and gentlemen, would the real Slim Shady please stand up? Stands up. I'm standing. Anyway. Okay. All right. Well, Didn't I'm go down too much. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it is going to be game number one between oh, Synapse Gaming and Invidious, who are going to be on your blue and red side. Nightfall is my, once again, what do you want to be called this time? Beautiful, handsome, lovely, sweet, Any, kind. any of the above will do. In... Any and all of the above. Uh, Nightfall, yeah, I'm a lonely either boy. way, is going to be the name of the cast that's joining me. <laughs> Hello there, how are we doing today? I hope you're all well, and we are in for a treat this round. Based on the drafts, it's going to be a hectic fight. I mean, look at the Wombos coming out from NVIDIA's and from Synapse, Synapse as well. Their burst damage coming through from Fonke, from Agony's Arpoash, and uh, Theodore Twitch. and Hearts go boom. Let's not leave out Elucidators. Speaking of which, let's introduce our teams on the side of Synapse. That's the order side, bottom side of the mini-map, left side of your spectator UI. It's elucidated in the solo lane on Hercules. In the jungle, it's gonna be Fonke on Al Kuang, waiting for that speed buff as he goes for it. Now, Agony in the mid lane on that Arp Wash, and our duo lane will be made, made up of Theodore replacing Entropy this week on Ymir, and Hatsko Beam, uh, uh, Hatsko Beam on <laughs> the AD carry, uh, Ho Yi. That's just like Shazam. Oh, that's got Shazam, yeah, Hatsko Beam. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, and on your chaos side of things, of course, NVIDIA is formerly known as Silicon Swartz. It is going to be top notch in the solo lane Freemason coming through from the jungle. Just Rogue in the mid lane, and Nick Crick and Runner in the duo lane on uh, Odin, Thor, Scylla, Geb, and Apollo, respectively. Silicon, sorry, NVIDIA is opting to start on the left hand side, Harpy Caps, then immediately go from there in towards their purple buff. They're gonna look for that. I believe they got both side harpy camps to start off with, and that's a real nice lead, especially when you've got a Scylla that got both sets. Mm-hmm. And getting Scylla online late game as fast as possible is definitely what you want. Her early game is her weak point. And Agony has to punish that as he picks up his red buff right now. Arpwash does win out early game against a Scylla, mainly because of his increased wave clear. He's got that fleeting breath that deals the ticking damage to the back side of the wave. He's also got that, uh, what's this one? Undead Surge. That one will clear a lot faster than a Scylla, so, yeah, just, uh, get Scylla, uh, to late game will be the the objective for Invidious. Then the Ima monsters will come through. Hopefully he can hit those ones. They are quite difficult to land, but the setup from Invidious with the Thor, Odin, and Gib will make it fairly easy for him. And that start as well. The amount of XP that, that Just Rogue has got at this point in time is absolutely insane. If you have a look at Agony, he's just about to tick level 5. He's got a wave to come through. Just Rogue's going to tag these back camps and get that level 5 at the same period of time. He's got mid camps. And you know the other thing about this start as well? He's spent very, very little time in the lane to get shoved under tower between the waves. He knew that our Posh was going to shove him in. All right, clear an objective whilst our Posh clears the wave. No problem whatsoever. I would have liked to have seen him coming through in the mid lane, Agony freezing the wave and zoning away, making sure that those minions died to his own minions and not hard shoving so much. He can just kill off those creeps as needed and uh, win out in that manner, but uh, not choosing to do so this time around. The Ola lane, Elucidator taken down to 50 HP, he's got that mitigate wounds, he's got to heal up just a little bit, but top notch definitely on top of this matchup early game. And that's what you expect though from an Odin versus her. Hercules. Hercules, I mean, he's going to do all right. He's got 200 health and 40 fizz protection, but 25 fizz all protection, fifty health from the Smithy Hammer. There's a little bit less stats in the There's way, but the they're going to slam down the combos on the right-hand side. Elucidator is solo, driving strike underneath the towel, looking for the double tap. And I unfortunately lag out at that point in time. I didn't quite see if they confirmed the kill or not. Uh, apparently uh, not. No, they didn't. So very, very close. Very close. So, oh wow, did you see how low Mason got there? How low is he? 28 HP as I click on him. So he's much lower than that when he got out of there. Very nicely played by Elucidator. That won't give up first blood, but he is put behind. Invidious, a lot of resources now down. So Synapse can play around that. 
Yeah, I mean they can. They're gonna get the left hand side mid camps, I believe right there just to just to make sure that they did gather some advantage from it right side about to spawn and just rogue is playing between them and the lane force use the crush to try and clear those camps as quickly as possible get the xp and the gold from them with nick crick forcing them out but uh not clearing the wave means that he's got to tank it for such a long period of time and that's where he's going to start <laughs> losing out as well is because of Scylla's lack of clear she hasn't got a lot of spells to keep that wave shoving and look at that three quarters of the health bar from rogue from just that one wave yeah it's he's he's coming online and that's not what synapse need that's not what they want in their lives is a is a is a Scylla with farm uh, so something I just want to point out is the Transcendence versus the Devourer's Gloves for Rana Barana and Hearts Go Boom. So last night I did play a Ho Yi Transcendence build and it's it's super strong. But it comes through on his abilities uh, rather than his auto attacks. Uh, while it does give him so much power uh, with, the, with the stacking Transcendence or blue buff stolen away by Invidious Elucidator. Not going to have that one. He comes in and he finds two enemies. Doesn't want any of that. Just returns delayed speed buff taken and by the Alquag. So, what do you think of Devourer's Gloves versus Transcendence? Okay, so I was having this out with um, earlier today, and Devourer's Gauntlets is actually the stronger build route because you get the natural penetration right coming through when you pick up the Ikaval. Well, you don't even have to go into the Ikaval, you can go straight into, depending upon your team comp of course this time around this specific comp the double late game threat comp I do expect rana to go straight for a hasten fatalis no Ikaval, and then into an executioner just to keep him safe still ramps up his attack speed nicely and he doesn't sort of skip out on that item what uh, the Ikaval does do if he does decide to go for that route is his physical damage will actually be higher than the transcendence devs gauntlets build route um, Transcendence, really? Transcendence RC build route, not Transcendence devs. Transcendence RC, it'll be a little bit higher, and the um penetrations are basically on the par. You want that RC for the burst of healing that comes from the passive, but the sustain from devs gauntlets is stronger. And either way, you're going to be going into the Executioner. What you do get as well from the devs gauntlets build is the option to go into that Hasten Fatalis without dropping off the Executioner. If you so choose, you can drop off the Executioner if you want as well, if there's not many tanky threats on the other side of the coin. But, from the side of Runner Brunner, he'll be going Executioner for sure. And yep. I feel from the side of Hearts Go Boom, he'll probably just go the Fatalis. Hmm. That's a, mm, that's a very, very well thought out uh, theory there. And it's most likely going to go down as Executioner will be favoured for Runner Brunner because of Freemason being on Thor. You want more damage down from that Thor on towards those enemies as we see the mid camps being contested a crush dealing a lots of damage to Fonke he blinks out of there Gooseby so Haz go boom he's got that transcendence do you reckon he'll go for the RC next? I think it's the build route for hunters at the moment are the most variable that they've been for a long while so there is actually yeah. a lot of chance to 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 really I, we can't say anything without seeing the first tier of the item as soon as we see the first tier of the next item we can say it, it's either going to be rc or executioner and then into hasten fatalis if hasten fatalis or it's going to be rc then executioner or executioner straight out and then a fatal you know there, there's a bunch of different routes and we just need to see the first tier item if Hu Yi, played by Hearts Go Boom, does opt to go for the Light Blade, I do expect him to go into the RC. Yeah, more likely than an Executioner. You want that sustain and penetration and attack speed, rather than just the attack speed power and um, uh, physical protection reduction. Um, the the lifesteal is just more favoured early game. Because the enemy does not have any protections online early game. Other than base stats, so yeah, that's that. So <laughs> yeah, and it'll, it'll hmm. depend upon what Run is looking to do as well. If he's looking to box out, expect him to potentially go for an Ikaval. I think in this game, confirm. Oh, that's actually the nice Sun is going to be knocked down. Let's go boom. He's looking for Rana, and the slam down from Freemason there. They got the stun on towards Hearts Go Boom, he's in trouble! Mason secures the kill! And wow, great slam down, the great bait forward from Rana, who wasn't committing to anything until after they got- after his teammate was in the air and ready to slam down. And that is first for Invidious on early game. What you probably don't want is Freemason on 4, so Thor's just gonna 
whenever he ganks, he's got to be a lot stronger as we see they're going now onto Fonke and Theodore. There is the Cataclysm coming out. I'm a monster, lands onto Fonke, just broke, gets the kill, he gets a double kill. Oh my word, just broke, comes in for the double kill. Beautiful play coming through. Just rotations, oh. Nvidia's oh. prepared. They're prepared to rotate. They know the spikes, they'd already gotten one kill on this left hand side of the map, one towards the Hu Yi, so they knew that somebody had to be coming over here to defend. But like, right, Theodore, you've got no mobility, all you have is a blink. After that, you are done, son, and they, they made sure of that. That was beautiful play coming from Invidious. To the Thor gank, in comes Just Rogue and Nit Crick. Nice cataclysm. And that was just a. <laughs> that I'm a monster was so well placed because Fonke was free. He. He. I don't know, just great accuracy coming through from just Rogue. Yeah, Rogue's played a lot of Thor though, like we said before. This is a composition that these guys have planned to play multiple times. We <laughs> saw it, I think, four times in the Open League Qualifier. Uh, sorry, the, the Pro League Qualifier. I'm pretty sure we saw it like four times, yeah. so they're versed on it. And, as well, they made sure that they weren't giving anything away going into the Pro League. They, they only played the one comp, especially when they were on stream, because, you know, they had to get in. They knew that they could play this comp and do it successfully. But at the same time, it's also thinking ahead, because they wanted to get into the Pro League and then still have compositions in reserve. A lot of the other teams had to show more compositions and more gods that they're going to play. And the other teams now got more research against them, not so for NVIDIAs. So another stat I just want to pull up, from the Pro League qualifiers, Freemason played Thor 6 out of 7 of those matches. 6 out of 7, that's how how good, oh, Anvil of Dawn as we see on there. Yeah, he goes down onto Fonke Spin to win, he's gonna secure that kill, 4 and 0 oh now is NVIDIAs. Nice pickup from NVIDIAs on towards Fonke in his own jungle. And now Elucidator looking for something, but Freemason and Top Notch are both here. Theodore slightly... And that's what this comp can do as well. Is this yeah, comp the can pick off one person and then mm -hmm. just burst through them and then back off. They're very able to pick off that one person and then just back off. Uh, Thor can slam down and then he can just throw the hammer in the opposite direction and get totally out of there from, from Freemason. From the side mm -hmm. of Scylla, she can use the cross, she can use the armor monster, then she's got the sentinel to get out. Uh, Nick Crick can just start the rollout. He doesn't need to use the rollout to initiate. And generally, you won't actually see him use the rollout to initiate. He'll blink in, use the cataclysm, use the shockwave as needed, and then if he needs to get away, roll out. And top notch as well. He can get a blink in if he is when he picks up blink. I do expect him to be going blink. Drop the ring of spears, then he can jump out if he needs to. This comp is able to do damage, get around high mobility, but still be able to kill at the same time. Yeah, it's it's aggressive and safe at the exact same time. They can jump in with, with blink or lunge or whatever, and then they can jump out if things go south, if required. So they're giving very little chance for Synapse to be able to do anything. But will Synapse be able to come back as you see blink in the mid lane? Cataclysm does go down. They're going to pick up Theodore in the Ring of Spears. Freemason gets that kill. That's a stack for top notch. Oh, he gets executed by Fonka even with the Gib Shield. That was just a little bit too much. Uh, too little health increase. I'm a monster is channeled by just rogue and it's gonna land down onto Elucidator with that Amble of Dawn. Enough burst coming through. Very nice kill there, but also good return kill from Fonke on towards top notch there. Yeah, and they're gonna look to see what they can really do at this point in time. It's a two for one trade again for Invidious. They kill off Elucidator and Theodore, and keeping Theodore away from the XP is crucial. He's Emir. He's gonna hit that late game spike and just become huge. All right, let's talk about our Hunter itemization at this point in time because we weren't able to 100% confirm what it was gonna be. Right, the RC Transcendence build route gives you the best early game spike you can possibly get. But it's team fight focused. It's not boxing. It's not boxing. It's burst, get out, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've got to wait for your 35%, and then you start sustaining up like an absolute monster. He doesn't have a huge steroid. His steroid's only coming through from the two. It's only onto one person, right? It's, it's not a self steroid. It's a steroid from his damage onto that single target, right? So it's not anything near what Runner Runner's gonna be able to do. The advantage though is that he does get RC and Transcendence online earlier. Ninja Tarbai coming through early for Runner Barunner as well means he has higher mobility and as soon as he gets that Ikeval online he has the early boxing he needs and transitions to a really strong mid game and nullifies Hercules, Hu Yi, 
And that's about it. Envelope yeah, Dawn. The main two that's be Mid lane. Dawn in the back lane. Oh, and there's a Frost Crit to start him up, but he's got them to Agony Ox there. Uh, empty the crypts. There's Nitkrik. Will he get executed by Fonka? Yes, he will. Nice blink through Fonka. He secures another kill. Top Notch gets a kill onto Agony under the tier 2 tower, but he's trapped under there. Hearts go boom, secures that one under the tower, and now they're sieging this tier 1 tower. Blink, Frost Breath, actually nice disengage with the Mesmerize. Beautiful Mesmerize coming through from Rana Barana. Excellent timing there. Great serenade, he sung them a bedtime story and they were not ready to hear that one. <laughs> they got put totally to sleep and only now are they just waking up to the silly trick that Rana Barana just put them through. But what about that combo from Just Rogue? He's able to set up kills for his team and the rest of them, they're able to dive in the back line. Freemason, look how deep he goes and he gets out. Top Notch sacrifices himself in the end to secure a couple kills and keep pressure on towards that mid lane tower. Take a look at the towers of Invidious. They've lost that one on the right hand side. Sure, they've got one on the left hand side. The mid lane tower of their opposition is below half health and exactly the same on the right hand side. They show up in a lane, they kill a tower, they move on. That is going to be the next five minutes. Oh, and look at the duo lane. There's a Sikkim down onto Theodore. The crush not going to deal too much because it is Ymir. He's the tankiest tank in all the tanky land with that scaling HP of 104. <laughs> like, Balance. <laughs> it's it, it, it's made up for in his lack of mobility, but uh, it was a very nice initiate by Synapse there by Theodore. It was just good counter initiate by Rana Barana with that mesmerize, and because of that, Synapse went straight to that attack speed buff because Rana was there by himself and they stole that away. So while Synapse were on the back end of that, they still took something away from Invidious. Warrior Tarboy coming through as well for Hearts Go Boom, so he's looking to be a little yeah. bit of a caster. Not looking for as many in hands to really proc off the Mark of the Golden Pro multiple times. He's just looking for Sunbreaker, and he's looking for Ricochet damage. Yeah, I understand it. I play Hu Yi. I get that. That, that, just, that just makes a little bit of sense. He's looking at cast, he's looking at burst, because they need to find some sort of kills. Oh, blink from and he's not okay. able to find multiple earlier attacks. Yeah, the blink away from Freemason, he's going to get totally out of... Sorry, not blink away, the blink in from Theodore. But the comp as well is important for Synapse. They've got an Al Kwong, right? Look who he assassinated in the last fight. It was Nick Crick, and Nick Crick was at like 10-15% health. He was well below that 30% threshold. It wasn't like he'd just gotten there and he had assassinated them. Nick Crick escaped, and Fonke had so overcommitted to killing him that in the end he had to ult him to confirm that kill. That's a little bit of a waste. Well, do a lane. Fonke was looking for Rana Barana. Opted to jump out of there. Interesting. Hmm, so I'm taking a look at the builds now, other than the 80 carries. <laughs> Mystical Mail for Elucidator. He's trying to keep up with that wave clear that's coming out from top notch. That bird bomb is so good at clearing that wave. But other than that, he's only got Warrior Tabai. He's a bit behind in terms of gold. Yeah, and already going in towards magical defense and increased health is top notch. Not picking up huge amounts of physical offense. Just enough. Just enough from the Runeforged Hammer and the Warrior Tabai to keep him going. Keep him doing enough damage. He's relying on kills in that passive, and they've got them so far. That's that's well enough. Leave it all alone. It's doing it's doing work for him at this point in time. But have a look at the build coming through from Agony. He's opted to go in towards the Warlock Sash. This is an item yeah. where you, you know you're going even you you're kind of in front in the mid lane. If you're a little bit behind, the stacks are so hard to get on. If you're falling a little bit behind, you're still going to go for a stacking item. You're kind of forcing the book of thought because of those less stacks. But look at the blink in. Oh, Nick Crick. It's a lot of damage. Heavenly Agility popped there. That's going to be down for when they empty the crypts come out. There is the I'm a monster. I'm not going to land onto Fonka as he blinks away. Across the skies came in from Rana Barana. Not going to find anything. Here's Hearts Go Boom. He's got the mark down onto Just Rogue. Beat stars come out. Anvil of Dawn is channeled up. Who will Freemason go down on? He goes down on Theodore. Empty the crypts is down now. Top Notch taking so much damage from that. Will he get executed? No. Agony gets the kill there with that uh, undead surge. And now Synapse down one, but they're still aggressing as Fonke needs to recall after that fight. Yeah, see what they can do at this point in time. Tagging up Freemason with that pass, uh, with that, sorry, with the two coming through from Hotska Boom is good as well because, you know, it's like, it's, it's anti-dive. You dive Freemason, you're risking a ricochet to the face. That was such a good zoning potential tool. Just, just by tagging him with it. Just say, hey... You're threatened. You're threatened. You can't mm -hmm. come forward, and that is the entirety of Silicon's remaining engage. Crix, he's still got the ultimate left. 
but uh and blink online mind you he could have still initiated but he needed to continue peeling for runner barana and just rogue for the sustained damage that those guys can put out and i feel like that's going to be how this transitions as well is one of them will teleport top notch on the lift lane he teleported to a ward behind hearts go boom he's in trouble oh. now and he's got no escape runner barana's going for the fight here is the sunbreaker going down onto Rana, he dashes out, hearts go boom, where will he go now? Here's Nutcrack, he rolls out, he knocks him into the wall, the lunge onto top notch. He there can't go anywhere, is he can't hearts. go anywhere! Yeah, Ring of Spears does go down, Ricochet as well, top notch secures that kill, and nice teleport there by top notch to secure that he, one. He couldn't use the dive bomb, you could see it, top notch was like, alright, I'm not using that Ring of Spears until you dive bomb, I'm not using mm -hmm. that Ring of Spears until you dive bomb, net crick's here, I punch you against the wall, we're just gonna lock you down against the wall, and that's just great planning from NVIDIA, so they're like, right, yeah. we've got the numbers, we're not committing the ultimate until it 100% secures the kill, Top Notch gets another kill mid -lane. inside that ring, but in mid lane, you mentioned it, they're in trouble, net crick's taking a lot of damage, but it's gonna get out, he just Ooh. walks away, just walks away! He's, Left -hand side. he's slightly tanky. <laughs> oh, Fonke, he's looking for something. He's not going to find it as Top Notch is here. He doesn't know Top Notch is there and his blink is on cooldown. Top Notch, does he have the lunge? He's not going to go for it. They're just going to secure that tier 2 tower and that's an extra 300 gold for the side of Invidious. Speaking of gold, let's take a look at our graphs. 5.1k gold for Invidious is the lead and 4.3k XP. So their lead is definitely very far ahead of Synapse. I feel like they need to contest the gold jury in these next couple of minutes to make sure that yep. it's sit down and Synapse cannot sneak it if NVIDIA's do end, and end up losing a fight, right? So if they take it away, they take it off the map, or they can use it as a bait forward. If they get the proper ward control, yeah, they just sneak it. All right, they take it totally for free. No problem. We'll take that any day of the week. Nick Crick's found. Hearts go boom, though. They're looking at him. A great crush. It's going to drop a lot of damage and blow half health for Hearts go boom. So close that RC proc already and that's a risk and the base is here this is the perfect window to shove down this middle tower first why it's map pressure then you go for the gold fury if you can't get the mid tower fine back up just take the gold fury no loss they could win that fight as well but they're not going to go for it it was a three situation and it was on such low health three or four auto attacks from mana would have secured it but opting not to do that elucidator blue watching blue his blue buff being stolen away as nvidia not actually going to go for that one. Minja, uh, back to the Gold Fury, that's where Synapse can come back into this game. Yes. If they secure that, that's them... Mm, the lead won't be equaled, but it will it will definitely close that gap, make it much easier for them to, to come back into this. Itemize uh, much easier than what they're doing currently, and maybe win a team fight. Something else I'd like to point out from the NVIDIA... Uh, Nvidia's versus Synapse, as it sits at the moment, Synapse have not got any of these kills apart from sitting underneath their tower. That's the only way they've gotten kills. Because well, they much. wait for Nvidia's to come at them. Nvidia's are kind of using this tower as a bait at the moment. It is on the lowest sliver of health. Freemason and Rogue walk up to it. Look at that position. It, and it falls over to a sniff on the right hand side. It is still going to be the split push as well. Top Notch was thinking about engage mid. And the left hand side, Hatsuko Boom is still sitting over there. He's not committing to anything. Blink in the, the mid lane is now the engage. Rogue picks up a kill. This could be everything if they're not careful. Down though, I'm a monster. It doesn't quite land. Top Notch still looking for another one. Doesn't quite slam with these Bunny Freemason. They miss it all, but they're still chasing Theodore. When Theodore gets out on such low HP, uh, we've seen so many of those uh, low getaways, low HP getaways in this pro league last week and this week. It's actually crazy to see. It's so awesome how low people but are getting and still right getting inside. away. But yeah, Infidious another didn't, tier didn't two want to get massive amounts of kills. They just wanted to buy time for Runner Barana. And it's worked. Mm -hmm. It's worked a treat. The only tower left standing on the map is this mid lane one that NVIDIA's just baited Synapse to try and defend. And it's just like a line going across the map from the side of NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's excuse me, slowly going forward towards Synapse, taking everything away. And Synapse, like you mentioned, they're just fighting under tower. They're not fighting anywhere else, and that's a fact. They're always under tower, and NVIDIA's are forcing them into that position. If you, if you take a quick look, look and you tap M twice, you will see 
that the water coverage coming through from Synapse, there's one lingering near the fire giant. And other than that, NVIDIA have got four, five in aggressive positions, maintaining that line of vision. Now they're taking the gold fury because they've got that aggressive line of vision, because they've got control of the map. And, you know, they're just able to do whatever they want. The ward coverage is starting to come back through from Synapse, but it's on the fire giant side of the map. That's all they're worried about. And that means they lose the gold fury and they get further behind. This is problematic for them because the late game that they're really waiting on, well, videos they've got a... They've got a Ooh, blink in the they've mid lane, the able to put it down. Freemasons. Sunbreaker in a weird position. Armor Monster does come out. Freemason secures a kill onto our uh, egg in here. In the meantime, Elucidator is split pushing Freemason, gets a double kill in that mid lane. Shards, Shards of Ice is down. This is all of Synapse, apart from the split pusher, is going down. That's four for nothing in the mid lane for Invidious. Now they're looking for this Phoenix. Just Rogue does get picked, but he does have that Gib shield. Phoenix does go down, and Elucidator 5v1. Just Rogue is now on a rampage. Are they gonna end this at 24 minutes? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, what? wait, it's, hang on, it's Invidious. They might throw at the Titan here. <laughs> this could be a little bit rough, but the Titan's health is slowly burning down. It's down to 7k. We've got to be careful. Top Notch already forced enough. to back off. We've seen them do this. I don't know how many times. Let's not see it again. Invidious <laughs> are gonna be able to secure it this time around. And, well, it won't be another throw of the Titan. Instead, it'll be the Titan that they want to be falling over, and fall over it does. And that's game from NVIDIA's 25 minutes in the dot, 14 to 4. And they just played their win condition of great setups and just Rogue dealing a lot of damage. <laughs> At the end of that, just Rogue was 5-0-4. Think about that. That Scylla. His Scylla is just so strong. Yeah, and, and again, this falls back to this as a tried and true composition by, by Nvidia's. They know what they're doing. Let's talk about MVPs and possible solutions going forward into our second game of this series. You can't go past Rana Barana not having died at all. Freemason, though. Freemason, I think, is totally crucial. And Just Rogue was able to spit out a, a ton of player damage as well, with not dying. 504 on Scylla for Just Rogue and Freemason Thor, the god that he is so strong on, 5 on 8 Odin as well from top notch, 2, 3, and 10. He was absolutely crucial. The roaming three. Keep your eyes on them in the next one from Nvidius. Mm-hmm. And it was... Uh, I want to talk about Synapse just a little bit. They didn't really do anything. I mean, I don't want to say it like that because they did try, but just nothing happened. I mean, they got four kills, which is good, but only because Synapse dived too deep when Top Notch was under the tier tower while the tier one was still up in the mid lane. That was the other, and there was... That, Lucidator was really yeah. ever meant to, to force a fight. Yeah, even with the tower. So, interesting play. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work, and that was just very, very nice play coming through from Invidious again. On, only two of them died. And one of them was once, and the other one was three times. But God damn it, yeah. top notch. <laughs> Report for Feed Arena. So <laughs> Freemason was in 13 or 14 of all the kills on the team. Very nice participation. Anyway, we're going to jump to a five-minute break, guys, while we set up for game number two. We will be right back. Enjoy your popcorn and drinks. We shall be right back with rank four. This is the casting duo. We'll be right back. <laughs> 